Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day and we've been talking about this for a while now. We said we're going to have a conversation with a commercial bus driver who in March this year, along with his mate, assaulted um, a police officer in Wager after they flouted traffic regulations and resisted arrest. Now, there were lots of stories that came up, but months down the line, uh, this issue was in court and they were each slapped with a 1,800 Ghana cities fine um, for assaulting the police officer. And so they joined me in the studios, but... The conversation is even broader because we're trying to find out what the relationship should be like between the driver and the MTTD. And also, the GPRTU have also had their reservations about how they are treated uh, by the police officers on the streets as well. And we do have um, someone from Amnesty International Ghana to also talk about the rights um, of such drivers as well. And so, good morning and welcome. I have Francis Bobbing on my far left. He actually is the driver. Francis, that's saying good morning. If you have a call. All right. And also we have Superintendent Alex Obing. He's um, the Director for Education and Research at MTTD. Thank you so much for joining Thank us, you. sir. And also from the GPRT, he's the Industrial Relations Officer, Abbas Ibrahim Moro. Good morning. Thank you for joining us, Abbas. Mm -hmm. And finally, from Amnesty International Ghana, he's a Campaign Coordinator, Samuel K. Agboche. Good morning as Good. well. And so just to remind you of what actually <clears throat> happened or what ensued between the commercial bus driver, his mate, and the police officer. Let's take a look at this video. Uh, this happened in Wager sometime <clears throat> in March 2019. <laughs> All right, so yes, that is actually the video. And Francis is here with me. Now, the story that we got was the fact that they stopped in the middle of the road to pick up passengers. And, you know, this led to um, some accidents happening. And so when the policeman realized it, he tried to stop them and they sped off. So he still uh, tracked them down. And unfortunately, that ensued into a brawl, which led to them being fined later on. And so, Francis, first of all, I want to confirm. In the story, And yano kre. Inti story na ba news ni mo na yesa. Inti what happened? Sadan e den e siye. Okay. Asem ni efikaswa a ebesi ya komadina. Yedu weja janchi na na long ba iku biya se isiwo. Inti ma eko eko kake tree na triangle si tree. Okay. Eko kake tree nuna we meet in the door. No far passenger. No ni mukwa so afi ansa na meet tree no. Okay. So far na. Biya do na ni yaba stop. Then your bus stop. Uh, track no track not say it's point. Okay, okay. okay. It goes slow by him. Mm. It will be enough for him. We change so on tune for now. He ain't finna. Yeah, your tune. But that time, he panna for you. Okay. Ena, your call. Eh, inti. He won't say police be there. Chima lam jan show be so busy. It's not bus stop. I will see. He won't say policeman. On she empty to you at a day. Mhm. Or to your car motor chip. Car, a full car. But not she police uniform. She police uniform. Mhm. Eno, obe close to your car no. To obe close to no so achi. Okay. Me too. Yeah. Me can't So to kina me yes eh oh me nim de my inti or say or chime no or one or start here. Or start it then. Or start it so bomb me. Eh what kind of? Eh what kind of? So to kina me de me sako kina no say oh then tina my inti ya. Or say or chime no start it here. So bomb me. A passing yes work and momo crash and so unjai. Okay. Na drive on kuti ni pangwa. Na watuasha ni so bomb me sana. At that time, na engineer that so on. Na engineer that so on. A passing yes boom. Ti e bani sa ano e ma mi lusu control na kani kuni china e dum e jani dumu at once. Okay. Ti o hona pe e na police ni nu e to share mi sun ti mi mate ni nu e so ba so se on share na on yen master sa ti o bapata. No dan di ko mate ni so na mi ni a kwa si form. Mi si form no hum mi kubusa ni pose ma e den. Hum mi na no sa so to share mi so. 
na ma me se me se me defend me ho o meet me hwe se me ngina ho no bo me okay Okay. Into now, mo bo no no. Into obi obi ne best separate. Mo ambo no. Na se video no na mo mo punching no. Into ano no ne nye beating sana. It me actually say video ndi nye full no mucha no. So mo starti worka ni mo. Kumi oso no mo. No no starti ye because se bi me kope manu di ani di me a driver. Then into na me ni police ni kuwa koye Santa Santa wa me. Okay. So no no starti wa me. So me 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 jo so ambo me kumi because they drew no. Okay, let me bring Mr. Bas Imuro in, and he is the Industrial Relations Officer for GPRTU. And this is about complaints that we've gotten um, continuously about the conduct of commercial bus drivers on our streets. Um, the story, well, he says that's a lie. But parking in the middle of the road to wait for a passenger is nothing new. Um, in our country, especially in Accra. We witness it every single day, and I'm sure you are aware of it. What do you do, um, you know, to such drivers, and what kind of education do you give, you know, your commercial bus drivers before they set off? Thank you very much, and good morning to all uh, viewers, mm. uh, especially to all drivers across the country. Yeah. It's unfortunate. This is like one-sided journalism, mm -hmm. which ends up to be very bad. Mm. Yes, no driver will attack a uniformed person, be it a police officer, a fire officer, mm. an army officer in uniform. But yeah. just unfortunate. And we can all attest to the fact that uh, it won't be possible for a driver to attack a uniformed person the way we saw we it. Saw. Mm. Something might have cropped up. Yeah. We strongly believe. Now, a police officer, you are post at Wager Junction. Professionally, mm -hmm. you are supposed to pick the number. Okay. And make sure you can signal the next police ahead. So you're not supposed to move? Okay. He hasn't hit anybody All whereby right. the offense will be so huge. But that he flouted. Yes, I, I wasn't there. Yeah. He has explained. What yes, happened? of course. He said, he has said that, spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. that yes, they may pick somebody where they were not supposed to pick. But what I'm saying is, you have been stationed. If the police is to act professional, I'm mm -hmm. not saying all mm -hmm. police are cross board. Mm -hmm. Some of them are with those characters. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has offended. Let me chase him up. So you have to abandon your duty post, mm -hmm. pick a Okada Okada, which we are all trying to make sure they we are get no off longer the in existence. Exactly. You are encouraging them, pick Okada, chase him up. Mm -hmm. You see, I was not there. Okay. I stand for courage anyway. But as a professional driver, as one of their leaders, the truth must be told anywhere, in the time, yeah. and all the time. Okay. You see, I say that we don't support anybody attacking a uniformed personnel. Yeah. I'm also saying the police, the said police officer, also behaved unprofessionally. Mm -hmm. If what he's saying is the truth. Yeah. And I'm also believing halfway. I will give you eighty percent truth. Because okay. Because no driver will just attack a uniformed personnel the way we saw. You could see that. He was defending himself with some heavy punches. Yeah. Meaning something might have cropped up. But these were two people against one police officer. Yes, If anything, yes, should yes. they not have walked away? I, I said earlier on, I do not support anybody attacking any, any police. Uniform. Because should anything happen to me, I have to report to the police. Exactly. Which we've all agreed that they are there to save lives and properties. Okay. Yes. So... But well, you haven't answered my other question about yeah. the conduct of your drivers oh, yes, on the road yes, as well. Yes. Because maybe for him, he, he, like he said, Surpri yes, he was wrong, but there are lots of them. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. this guy is not a GPRTU member. Surprisingly. Okay. But okay. He's, he's working in Greater Accra. We are also leading drivers in Greater Accra. Mm. And we've had so many complaints from some of the bad police officers. Mm -hmm. Hence, we have to step in and make sure we rectify those issues that we felt are not good. Mm -hmm. We say, yes, some, some drivers behave badly. Yeah. Some, mm -hmm. likewise, some police officers also who behaved badly. Yeah. GPR2, we've, for the past three years, we've been organizing two seminars in a year for our drivers. Mm. Two seminars in a year Did for our drivers. Do they attend? Yes, they do. They do, okay. they do. Even the last seminar, 
uh, I think there was a TV coverage mm. on it. We gave, we, after the seminar, we gave her some awards. And what's so, the seminar usually about? We, 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 we teach them about some do's and don'ts in the driving industry. Okay. I'm saying this because only few drivers have privilege to even go through the road traffic regulation yeah. or the LI 2180. Mm -hmm. So we most often uh, tell them about how to go about it. We right. encourage them that every junior, the secretary, can normally read and write. Okay. They should go to Ghana Publishing, buy one for themselves at their leisure time, normally okay. around 11, 30, 12. Okay. Uh, passengers so are not in abundance. They mm. can be going through with them. These are some of the things because the driving industry, the ways it was being started, started without any, you know, uh, any rules and laws. Any, okay. any deep educational background. All right. So we are not <laughs> transforming the system, which I believe We've done about 80 or 70 percent. You believe so? I believe, yes. Okay. Let me bring Superintendent uh, of being in this conversation. I want to find out from you. I mean, he talked about the conduct of the police officer. Usually in cases like this, how should the MTD officer behave? How should he handle an issue of misbehavior on our roads? Uh, thank you very much. You're I welcome. Think, uh, uh, good morning to panelists uh, and, morning, and viewers and your very self. Thank you. Good morning. On this rich platform for us to engage with viewers on how to enhance our public health and safety issues so yeah. that we will not be found wanting or expose ourselves to danger. Mm -hmm. I think uh, all that you are talking about borders on the safe use of our road in yeah. the interest of public safety, basically. And we are dealing with users of the road or uh, stakeholders, mm -hmm. we have vehicle owners, we have motorists, otherwise called drivers yeah. or riders, we have passengers or vehicle occupants and pedestrians. Mm -hmm. And because we are exposed to the public space, there are certain rules and regulations to ensure decorous engagements. Okay. The view of respecting the rights of others so that uh, what I have in my hand may not happen. Because uh, uh, when you look in my hand, between January and October, mm -hmm. we've had about 11,300 and over preventable crashes occurring across the country, okay. impacting on lives mm -hmm. of about 1,915 getting killed and about 11,000 and over injured with properties damaged amounting to over 18,000. And it's in this that our forebears have made rules of engagement. And so right. as a driver, and, and, and in order to avoid this, uh, it, uh, the, 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 the common culture and behavior is couched in law. Mm -hmm. And they call it SOP on our roads. And they mentioned the Road Traffic Act of 2004. Yeah. And the Road Traffic Regulation, LI 2020 of 2012. And the professional document that was made by Ghanaians in 1974, the road, the Hagan Highway Code. And this is where we have a common best practice that everybody is supposed to emulate, including motorists. And this, I will specific, uh, I will specify on, I think for, we have a responsibility to ensure that the vehicle that is coming on the road is safer. Okay. And First then, when it's safer, who is driving is critical. Mm -hmm. The person should have been permitted so if the vehicle is safe and it's omnibus, how does it say, well, there are so many things that goes in. Yeah. At least vehicle maintenance and all that, ties and all that. And then the driver himself is critical because the safety aspect of it, like if you are trained per the certified mm. license acquisition procedure in Ghana, yeah. we are sure that the license holder can guarantee our safety in terms of movement of the vehicle. Then the issue has to do also with Insurance, okay, roadworthiness, and the licensing I've talked about. Then the moving behavior, okay, manifesting those behaviors on the road is critical. Mm. How to position your vehicle, at what move, uh, at what rate are you moving in terms of speeding behavior, okay, and where are you stopping, all right, and where are you alighting, and where are you picking, okay. are matters that are critical that if not checked by the traffic police officer who sits between the license issuer with the DVLA mm -hmm. and the general public to ensure that drivers conform to the best practices, best practice. 
So you check all these things. And, and, and these things are things that is checked before <coughs> the driver moves, during move, uh, movement, and, and when he answer. exits. And these are critical matters that uh, traffic police officers across the country don't, don't uh, compromise on. on Not to compromise. Okay, okay. Because, and this, for example, can be seen in what I have in my hand. Mm -hmm. Because they are vigilant. So far this year, we've seen about 5,104 motorists having been apprehended, investigated, and so far 3,838 out of the 4,464 that were charged before yeah. the motor cars are yeah. for varying offenses contrary to the laws I talked about. All right. And they have been convicted. And 32 have been confined to the Gula prison. Mm. And over 2 million Ghana cities have been posed on them as deterrent fines. Okay. And this, I must say, is done within the law. All right. And it is always played out at the motor cars. I like that you mentioned the number of things that you check out. Um, you check on these drivers. But a lot of these drivers have also complained that sometimes you don't even give them, or even most times, you don't give them that utmost respect. The fact that they are commercial bus drivers alone is already a bad thing. So the moment you approach them, you're treating them like they're already criminals, no respect for them, you speak to them anyhow. And then there's the issue of molestation and also um, you know, taking some money from them as well. And so these are the reasons why they try to protect themselves Excesses. from the police. When it comes to traffic policing, it's something that police frowns on. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have systems within our means to receive such complaints and to prevent it in certain instances. And any time it comes to our notice, we don't sit on our house. But right. we act on it, particularly through the Police Intelligence and Professional Bureau. And that is why, uh, about a month ago, mm -hmm. the police administration has come up with a uh, certain specific numbers to guide Ghanaians to lodge their complaints. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And let me, uh, would, uh, let me crave your indulgence. All right. And uh, uh, call them out. And okay. I expect viewers to take pen and write them down and save it as police emergency lines and complaint numbers. All right. One is 0550 uh, 3 2 Zero five five zero three two three two three, and then zero two seven five zero 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 one five. All right. These are all for voice calls and SMS only to lodge your complaint. Lastly, we have zero two zero six six three nine one two and zero two zero. 6639121 for WhatsApp and videos so that okay. when such information is received, there is police desk and officers who attend to it and deal with it swiftly. Immediate, okay. This should not also be confused with our traditional numbers, yeah, in case of emergency. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is separate. That's and in different. case of emergency, all right. That's for our 191 18555. Okay. And zero three zero two seven seven three nine zero six is there for all Ghanaians across the country as well. But only to, for emergencies. To, to inform police when they are under attack. Okay. Among others. Okay. Uh, about all so, right. And, and so that, that is it. And uh, it is it is critical that all of us who uh, appreciate this. Mm -hmm. However, police are not trained to go and violate the rights mm -hmm. of Ghanaians, mm -hmm. including motorists and vehicle occupants, but only to cause arrest. And right. if there is an offence committed, and then the offence, the person is told the offence in a language in understand, consistent with Article 12, our 1992 Republican Constitution, and uh, chapter, chapter 5. And then we expect that uh, with dispatch, the person should be moved to a police station. Okay. for an investigator to be assigned. So this is very critical, so that we avoid escalation. All right. That is why these numbers are going out, to ensure that police officers act professionally. Shouldn't the NTTD officer have been in you know, a reflector to indicate that he, or at least in the right attire, because from what he said, he didn't see any of that, so he wasn't sure if it was the right man. Secondly, this man was also on an Okada. And so you are not even sure if he's the right person to be causing an arrest or not. Should the uniform alone be enough, regardless of how he appears or the situation under which he is causing an arrest? The, the, uh, given the case has 
being terminated at the court. Mm -hmm. So uh, there some of these issues we may not have, we may not be privy to the detail. But that is okay. important is that okay. a police officer in uniform consistent with regulation 47 of our road traffic regulation can enforce the road law. But okay. professionally, we have trained traffic officers and clothed them in white tunic yes. with reflective vest over it mm -hmm. in certain instances. But it doesn't prevent mm -hmm. a police officer in uniform to ensure that motorists comply with safer re safety right. regulations. And so, uh, under normal circumstances, a traffic officer clothed is supposed to enforce the rule law. However, if a police officer even go uh, attending to a sick person because he's a medical doctor at a police facility yeah. or he's a finance officer, uh, it sees or chances on an infraction, mm -hmm. it is incumbent on him or her in the interest of our public health and safety yeah. to ensure that the, 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 the situation is, is contained. Okay. And, but however, what we are not happy is instances where this basic enforcement will escalate mm -hmm. to, to the extent of physicals and uh, assault and battery. If and the police is, officer assaults me first, what, what do I do? Critical. But well, the point is that uh, we are all Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. We are not supposed to act and. And so if even a police officer in uniform is assaulting, all that we require is evidence thereof. All and right. then you seek the necessary redress and, okay. and protect yourself. Again, let us also uh, be mindful because if you look at our crash data. Mm -hmm. It looks as if Ghanaians are concluding that any person on a two-wheeler, mm -hmm. motor bicycles, yeah. are operating, uh, using it for commercial purpose. All it right. is not true. Mm. And so let us know that, that across the country, majority of mot motor bicycles we have are for other purposes than being used oh, sure. in this urbanized uh, police jurisdiction for you could carry fair pay, pay passengers. So okay. for us to conclude that maybe a police officer on a motorbike might have been carried by a fair paying rider. Mm. You get it. That, that becomes an, an issue. However, <clears throat> okay. however, what is important is that if a police officer is even sitting on a motorbike, we expect that our police officer should be in protective clothing. The rider should also be in the protective clothing. Right. That is what is critical. And the motorcycle should be ridden in the way that will, say, will be safer, including riding on the right and stopping at the junction. All right. So let me, let me bring Mr. Right. Samuel um, Agoche in. He's from Amnesty International Ghana. We're <clears> talking <throat> about the rights of commercial drivers, um, you know, on our roads. Because clearly, from what they have indicated, the police officers... Um, don't exactly give them the utmost respect that they want. And so how do I know that I'm protected by the same person who's supposed to protect me? Now he's fighting against me and I'm not sure how to conduct myself. What would you say? What does Amnesty International have to do with this particular conversation as well? Thank you very much and good morning to viewers. Good morning. We have huge challenge with how police deal with suspects okay. in this country. Mm -hmm. We have a problem with how police respect the law when it comes to suspects. Okay. Uh, we have, of course, followed this case from the beginning through court processes and so mm -hmm. on. And the judge in his uh, delivery made mention of the extent to which the police, uh, this particular police officer, went okay. to enforce uh, the law mm. uh, to the extent that <clears throat> you jump into a moving vehicle. And so you put a question to uh, our DSP? honorable yeah. officer. Yeah. How well, should this particular officer, how will, she, will he have acted yeah. in that situation? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, these are some of the questions that we need to answer. When a police officer begins to assault you, what do you have to do? Exactly. To what extent can you defend yourself? Mm -hmm. They are talking about evidence. Assume a police officer is beating you, how can you take your own evidence? Exactly. How? You can't do that. In this particular case, we were just lucky that uh, somebody took a video of the incident. Mm -hmm. It didn't start from the beginning, of course. It took the video from somewhere, so we didn't get the full benefit of the video. But when you are attacked by the police, what will you do? Yeah. Can you fight back? Mm -hmm. To what extent can you fight back? How do you get the evidence? To show, will you even be alive to tell the to story? To tell the story, exactly. Will you be alive to tell the story? Mm. So we have a huge problem. This uh, driver and the mate, if 
for Amnesty International, Human Rights and Advocacy Center, mm -hmm. and some other individual lawyers. If we hadn't come in, these people wouldn't have been alive. No? I'm telling you. Why if do you we say hadn't, so? If we hadn't come in as early as possible, these individuals wouldn't have been alive. Okay, tell and us I why. Know why. I know why I'm saying that, even okay. though I wouldn't say everything over here. Mm. They wouldn't have been alive. Because why they were in police custody, they were beaten and tortured. Is that true? Yes. They beat you. What exactly yeah. happened? Sorry, not to cut you, but yes. I just want him to tell us the story. Yes. What was the situation like when you okay. got arrested? If you all know. Uh-huh. Obviously, I say I be called police station. I call report. Okay. Mm. Mm. You call or do call. Hmm. You call car. I'm not say. I say me see Malam. They don't call Malam police station. I call your case. No. Okay. I call Malam police station. I call your case. You call any minute, mass or so. Mm. Oh my boy, dada. Oh my boy, police. You need to talk about me. Okay. Oh boy, me. Hmm. No minute, mass or police. You need my form. Officer, no. You send me to the hospital. Hmm. After that, no. No more to your car. Need the call. We say or doko. Okay. Ti ese kwa kwa shweka ni chiri kwa ni. Ti yako doko ona mi de forms ni kwa chuma na mo chini. Oh. Say me na mi police ni kwa kuni yano. Ana na mo hu video ni dada. Police ni ne di kwa kuyi case. Afre mo okay okay. Unti mi kwa na mo chini. Mo mo chini ni Saturday na Saturday ni mi na video ni show ye. Mhm. Show ina pe na mo starti ye. Obi aba una ni police ni kuni na mo ye na mo boy. Mo chuo sada na. Friday na de chini. That day ni dom chini me tino. Oh, sada no mochi o mate no ko shee o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o uh, we headquarters, police headquarters. I'm the baby I'm the oh. anti robbery office. I'm the madam. Anti robbery office. Anti robbery office. I'm the 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 anti Mm -hmm. Office, no dear co Biena, no dear Koshi. Oh, until Hodia, a man attacking with you, Biena, what your man taki about your home and your Boyana to you. You knew you know, that's why. But I'm better now, you mean him. Unbelievable, Mr. Yeah. Summer. I yeah. please carry on. Yeah. So he so has we, narrated. What yeah, we went to them at DNI and we saw we have provided all those evidence in court medical report, the beating. Uh, we provided all those evidence in court, mm -hmm. and uh, we have enough evidence from the passengers in the car that witnessed the original uh, yes, origination of the case. Yeah. Also came to court to testify uh, how it was started. But you know, in the wisdom of the judge, mm -hmm. and you see, no, no amount of provocation should should give you that courage to assault yeah. a public officer, yeah. for that matter, a police officer. Mm -hmm. No, under no circumstance should you retaliate. An assault on you by the police. But see, but the difficulty is that will you trust that you can go and lodge a complaint, an independent investigation will be conducted into the incident, mm -hmm. and to the extent that the police officer will be punished? Yeah. Will you? He has given uh, uh, the peep is there, yeah. which is an the, the, the internal investigative body <coughs> to investigate such complaints and punish. But will you, will you trust the police to investigate themselves mm -hmm. and punish the perpetrators? Yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. But to Thomas say, yes, we've seen few instances where they've done a good job. But the majority of the complaints, we don't see the outcome of them. And that's why we, the uh, uh, um, civil society organizations, are calling for an independent police commission. Independent from the police. Mm -hmm. So that... People can have confidence. So some of these incidents, it is because people don't really feel that when they report a police assault, a police brutality, a violation of rights, anything will be done about it. Be done. So they are, they are tempted to take the law into their own hands, which is not which is very wrong. good. Okay. Which is not very good. Mm -hmm. And we, we side with the judge's pronouncement that these people were wrong, in mm -hmm. fact, in fighting the police officer. Okay. They were completely out of order in fighting back. But the question is, to what extent can you defend yourself? Mm -hmm. Can you protect your right? Yeah. You and see, what extent can you do that? 
So let's establish an independent police commission. All right. Then we will all have uh, the trust in that commission. And the police officer, not only as civilian, mm -hmm. the police officer <coughs> himself will also have a platform to also air his grievances. All right. Because the police themselves are suffering even among themselves. Mm -hmm. They are all violations, uh, violations and abuses and so on and so forth. This independent commission will be able to do the, the job for us. All right. So now they were charged. Each of them was, was charged with 1,800 Ghana yes, CDs. Yes. Um, Bill, were you satisfied with that? And I would ask, um, you know, you as well, GPRTU. Yes, yes as Ghanaian, Or was that too much for them? As Ghan Well, well, and that, that was the discretion of the judge. The judge, yes. We, the transport operator, GPRTU, we accepted that in good faith. We, we accepted that in good faith, not because we are happy, mm -hmm. but because of current trend of incidents happening. Police officer is being killed here, being killed there. Yeah. And unfortunately for the drivers, that was the period their incident Around, yes. also cropped up. Mm -hmm. So, well, as part of the laws, uh, I've said earlier on that it's like one-sided journalism. Mm -hmm. They have been spotted on the video trying to defend themselves, themselves you exactly. saw how much, meaning how hard the police also hit him. So you can see the response that he was giving back. Mm. But unfortunately, we never support, I said earlier, yeah. any driver fighting a uniform personnel, no. no. So we accepted the judgment in good faith. Okay. But we have a lot behind it. There are so many incidents which has been which swept are, under the carpet, yeah. which we are still fighting that it shouldn't repeat itself again. Definitely. Francis, yes, now we super or court honum. I didn't know. 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 I Okay, but one cast. Yeah, one cast police in Nancas and Cassano in Nina Semino. You do more doc on. Be Jana, a new woman or Catchens and Juanny Francis. Nami will inside. We Pia Bontina or whom we not say Minimuno. Nami shading in Man Cassano say Mina Nini Yanta and Tawana. See, me coins a woman. Or catch her or sell over coins a woman coins a woman. Eh. Okay. But I'm not sure about the police officer who was also involved in this case. Was there any evidence, enough evidence against him? Was he charged for his behavior as well? Um, we haven't heard anything. We, we actually petitioned the, yeah. the Attorney General mm -hmm. to have the police officer arrested mm -hmm. and those who assaulted them in their custody also arrested and prosecuted. Yeah. Because, we, I mean, a suspect in your custody, you're supposed to pro protect the person and produce the person before... The court, you have no right at all to assault the person. So even pass your... a verdict on them as well. Exactly, but unfortunately, the attorney general didn't hate you, and then we don't have the mandate to go and arrest a police officer. The attorney general didn't hate no, you. No, he call. didn't hate to our call. So and has we... the case been closed? Of course. I mean, for for now, well, maybe probably we need to consult our lawyers and oh. see whether these police officers who assaulted them in their custody can 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 still be brought to court. All right. Before I come to or okay. we can petition the police administration themselves. To investigate mm. the circumstances led to their assault in the okay. custody of the police. Let me let the pretendants of Bain speak on this uh, particular issue. Then I'll read some comments on social media so we can wrap up. And so, I mean, assaulting people even behind bars, passing verdicts on them when they have not been declared guilty. And the conduct of the police officers, especially when it comes to suspects. I'm sure that you disagree with these kinds of behaviors. What is being done? I think the uh, reasonableness of use of force. It's a standardized procedure applied by all police officers mm -hmm. across, including Ghana, to ensure that uh, peace is maintained. And uh, the issue of assaults, torture, mm -hmm. uh, matters of rights that are violated, and police take serious exception to it and always trigger its internal investigations to ensure all right. that proper uh, justice is set. And so, uh, like I said, a, our training and focus mm -hmm. is not on assaults and uh, uh, violating of rights. Okay. Some individuals may err, uh, and that's why there is a mechanism of uh, deterring okay. and also punishing such uh, officers. So okay. 
as and when complaints come up, uh, there are internal departments that deal with it, mm. including the external ones, like you said, right. Tony General and all that. So we leave it with we'll leave it at that. However, okay. however, I think majority of police officers across the country, even as I'm speaking, have been deployed across at all public duty points, looking out to detect offenders, mm. apprehending them, investigating, handling same, transporting same to courts. Okay. And on behalf of the certain attorney general, prosecuting. And if those convicted are ensure that they are forthcoming with the fines, and if they are sentenced to prison, we also are, they are handed from ourselves to the prison officer to take care of it. And we do that, however. So far as traffic police is concerned, we believe that the offenses, uh, vehicle uh, use offenses and driving offenses, licensing, insurance, roadworthiness, yeah. lo loading, alighting, and speed use, and That's all that, should not yeah. escalate to the extent of physical assault. That you get mm. what I'm talking about. And therefore, I will first of all entreat drivers in particular, because they are our own. Yeah. Without vehicle owners and drivers, there wouldn't, there wouldn't have been uh, traffic police. Because it's when road construction and vehicle came in that Ghana saw the need to enact road traffic ordinance in 1952 yeah. and brought, established motor traffic branch in their service. And therefore, we need them as they need us. And so I will entreat them that these offenses that leads to this escalation can be yeah. prevented. But are you aware that some of these so, people are being assaulted? And if you are, what is being done about it, especially with the police in question? Um, you said you have some internal um, you know, ways by which you handle some of these issues. Uh, Has he been punished? There are a lot of police officers who are on interdiction. Okay. Who have been suspended. What about this man in particular? Uh, I will have to take a, a go okay. back and look okay. at it. But All however, right. don't, we have a lot of such cases that... that are, uh, 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 misconduct and unprofessional right. behavior by police officers that complain that the public police has received. Okay. And investigations are ongoing. And I know that some have on suspension. All right. Right. Interdiction. Which some is have uh, cases have been adjudicated. Some have even been sent to the attorney general to be prosecuted. Some have been, uh, as it were, removed from the service. From the, okay. Some have been dismissed. Others have had their rank up to reduce. And Good. all other myriad of sanctions have been applied. All right, because, let me just go yeah, straight. Are, yeah. Sorry to cut you, but let me just go straight and read a few messages. Our time is not enough. And so let's go this way. Um, all right. Well, looks like we're struggling with that. So Noku says, one love to Ghana police. They are well trained. And Niyama Amasa Osakono says, my question to the police is, what happened to the police officer who clearly misconducted himself by hanging on to the moving trotter and punching the driver in the face, an action which can result in a fatal accident, which is what, um, you know, I asked as well. And the helmet was his savior that day, like obituary. Okay, that's from Kofi Morgan. Nana J says that the gap between the trotter drivers and the police is ignorance of the law. The real Ghanaians by nature are law-abiding people, and it's our duty to use various platforms to educate our drivers about the numerous driving laws day in and day out and ensure that they are enforced. And I believe with time, they will understand and obey the law. GPRTU says uh, they can that two conferences um, annually to educate their drivers as well. Pablo Dissidenti says that this country can't identify and develop human talent. This driver could have been the next Mayweather. See uppercut. <laughs> okay, Ply says, I don't support the Drivers Act, but sometimes these policemen are so annoying. Beatrice Safari says, hmm, between police and drivers, I don't know, but there's a wide gap. I want to ask, why didn't they pick up the vehicle number and inform the next barrier ahead of him to arrest the driver instead of picking a motorcycle and chasing the sprinter um, all along to end this. Uh, what was preventing him from doing that? Highly unprofessional. Okay, um, please ask him what really happened. Well, Francis has told us what exactly happened. He says he didn't stop in the middle of the road, uh, but only got blocked by, um, you know, a truck. Okay, so Mohammed says, why is it that the police sometimes provoke drivers deliberately? That's Mohammed Rashad. And, um... Chelsea Hennis Soldier Boy says, will he ever engage in such an act? Clearly not. I'm not sure he wants to pay 1800 again. Um, Young Psyche says, why waste this driver's talent? Okay, a lot of you think that he was talented. No problem. But these are a few of the comments that we have seen. I'm trying to read as many. Bill or Hennis says, the driver, well, I've read that already. Okay, all right. So I, I think that's all time will allow for us to discuss this topic. But in the studios, I've had with me Francis 
Boabing. He's the driver who was caught on video attacking the police officer, but he's given his story as well. Samuel K. Agboche is the campaign coordinator for Amnesty International Ghana. They've been on the case from beginning to end, and he says that there's a need for the police officers to treat drivers and motorists better. Abbas Ibrahim Moro is the Greater Accra Industrial Re Relations Officer for GPRTU, and Superintendent Alex Obing is the Director for Educational Research at MTTD. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. And we hope that we will not see such incidences occur on our roads again. Better relations between our um, police officers and our drivers as well. And also, he did drop some numbers. And so if you see any driver flouting um, you know, the, the law, you know what to do. Pick a video or record a video, take a picture, and send to the numbers. I'm sure we'll drop them again before the end of the show, just in case you missed out on that. It's still TV3 New Day. There's more coming up.